God works in the now. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white already to harvest. The chief difference between rational theology and false theology is essentially a difference in tense. One is claiming your good now, and the other is preparing for it in the future. The first is accepting what you already have, while the second is trying to demonstrate it. It is the difference between unloading the ship that is already moored at the dock and waiting for an imaginary ship to come in. It is a difference between seeking things and having things seek you. It is a difference between seeing things as they are and seeing them as they appear. Now is the accepted time. It is what we do in the present that counts. The past is gone, and the future is not ready to be acted upon. Give your time, your talent, and your power to that which is now at hand, and you will do things worthwhile. You will not waste time upon what you expect to do but you will turn all your energies upon that which you now can do. Results will positively flow. Instead of giving anxious thought to the bridge we may have to cross, we should give scientific thought to the increase of present ability and power. Thus we make ourselves fully competent to master every occasion that may be met. When you are told not to talk about the four months which the human mind says are necessary to produce a harvest, you are warned not to put a time limit upon what God can do for you. It means literally that you are not to consider the processes of sowing and growing, but to expect everything now. The grain you are required to gather is already ripe. It is ripe. Do you hear? The fields are white. They are all ready to pluck. Behold, look again. Are you a grower or a harvester? Do you have eyes and see not? Say not ye. There are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Rather, consider the difference between now and then, between reaping and growing, between revelation and demonstration, between being and becoming. What does it mean when you are told to lift up your eyes and look? Can you see the higher good planned for you? Can you accept it? How do you pray? Do you petition or beg God to do something for you, or do you thank Him because you already have it? Yes, it is the tense and spiritual work which makes all the difference in the results. Either the field is planted, or you must plant it. Either the grain is ripe, or you must ripen it. Which will you have? There is an old slogan which says, eventually, why not now? It is now or never. Now are we the sons of God. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is now. Everything is now. Your ship is in, and you can unload it whenever you choose. The law of Jesus Christ is not a law of demonstration, but of fulfillment. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I am here. I am come that your joy might be full. Full, do you hear? All that the Father hath is mine is yours. It is yours now, and only awaits a corresponding state of consciousness to bring it into being. But man postpones, or remembers, he does not live in the present, but with reverted eyes laments the past, or heedless of the riches that surround him, stands on tiptoes to foresee the future. He cannot be happy and strong until he too lives with nature in the present above time. I am the resurrection and the life. You do not have to die to be immortal. You are immortal now. You are living a life that has no end. Right now your life is filled to the brim with luxury, health, wealth, power, happiness, peace, substance, prosperity, and contentment. If you are not enjoying your share of these good things, it is because through your negative images and thinking, you are causing God to bring to you something else. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is what happens to you when you stop being that which you thought you were, and begin to be that which you are. To lose the outward manifestation ensures the inward revelation, yea, the fulfillment of the promise. He dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Why not? because it is with you now. It is in you. It is you. 
In Him we live, move, and have our being. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is here now. It is with men. That which is already here does not have to come. There is no place for it to come from. You cannot go to where you are. You can only discover where you are. That which is does not have to be demonstrated but proved. It does not have to be transmitted but revealed. It does not have to be reflected but individualized and personified. That which is must be recognized, lived in, and used. It cannot be brought here as a result of our thinking, praying, or demonstrating. We can only wake up to it. We can only become aware that it is. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even also I am known. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. The human mind, unaided by the Christ mind, does not see things as they are, but only as they appear, and appearances as we know are deceiving. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. They must be seen through the spiritual senses with the mind of Christ. When Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world, he meant that we could not express his life, health, substance, and power without his mind. Since God is spirit and his kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, both must be contacted on spiritual terms. Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, darkness, and Christ shall give thee light. Since the darkness of human understanding is the only problem there is, it can be overcome only as we let in the light. As the light grows, we shall see things as they are. We shall see them face to face. We shall know as we are known. Ye are the light of the world, your world. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Ye have eyes, said Jesus, and see not. Ears have ye, and hear not. To try to discern spiritual things without his mind or light is like going into a dark room to find any object. Without the light one sees but faintly the dim outlines of the objects in the room, but cannot discern clearly anything that is there. It is almost impossible to find what he is looking for. The objects are all there, but he does not see them as they are. Without the light, he has a limited vision of everything in the room. Then shall the eyes of the blind be open and the ears of the deaf unstopped. The vision of the single eye is true. In the midst of the most imperfect, malformed, and pain-racked body is perfection. Within the meanest, most murderous man alive is God. Under the most crippled enterprise is God. Over the most helpless situation is God. He is both the visible in perfection and the invisible perfection. There could be no imperfection without perfection. The imperfections are but our failure to see clearly the internal perfection which never changes. Like the objects in the dark room without the light, reality does not come into full view. Beholding perfection, it is decreed for me. Wherever you can vision perfection, says Celia Cole, you can attain it. As far and high as you are able to see, so far and high can you go. Your ability is always equal to your vision. The trick, of course, is to be able to brush aside appearances, to go right through them to the spiritual fact back of them. Like pushing away the more or less imperfect instrument that is a lamp and beholding the wonder of light, then to realize what the spiritual fact is, as a scientist knows what his formula is, and to stand upon it immovable, undisturbed, no matter what appears. By using the power we have to see good, more will come. By observing the working of the law in every happening, you develop spiritual perfection. Use it in the little things of every day and it will come automatically for the big ones. What will you have, said Emerson? Pay for it and take it. When you go to Honolulu, you do not have to demonstrate the climate, plants, swimming, and volcanoes. You only have to see what is already there and enjoy it. When you are in Hawaii, you are under the laws of Hawaii and no longer under the laws of your home state. Then what would you think if you saw a man in Honolulu walking around the streets declaring that he was in Honolulu and affirming the sunshine, orchids, gardenias, etc.? Wouldn't you think that there was something wrong with such a man? 
Wouldn't you think it strange that he did not use and enjoy what he already had instead of talking about it? Then what about the truth students who spend his day and night declaring the truth and affirming that he is in the kingdom of God and does nothing about it? Is he any different from the man in Honolulu? Is it not true that a house divided against itself shall fall? How can one enjoy Honolulu unless he does it unthoughtfully, unless he acts as though he were there? And how can you enjoy the kingdom of God unless you proceed along the same lines? You do not need to take a train nor a boat to the kingdom of God. You do not even need to get anyone to put you in it. You are already there. You must stay in it unthoughtfully in the same way that you would stay where you are right now. When you jump into a pool of water, it is the business of the water to make you wet. The water substantiates itself. When you go to the North Pole, it is the business of the climate there to make you cold. It substantiates itself. When you go to the tropics, it is the business of the tropical climate to make you warm. When you go into the kingdom of God, keep your mind focused on the good, the positive. It is the business of the kingdom of God to supply you with everything you desire and need. Jesus said, All these things shall be added unto you. If you go into the kingdom of God, it will not only set you free, but keep you free as long as you remain in it. In the kingdom of God, you would not declare that there was no sickness, nor poverty, nor anything negative, because in the kingdom of God there would be nothing for negatives to act with. The perfection and good things of the kingdom of God have already been demonstrated for you. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the things of the kingdom of God and to keep giving them to you as long as you remain in it or positive to the good. Just as it is the business of water to keep you wet as long as you stay in the water. If you go back to your home state, however you lose sight of the things in Honolulu, just as when you go back to your human mind, you lose sight of the things in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, Remain within my love. Continue in my word. Abide in me. The secret of continuous supply is not to allow the mind to be divided against itself. He will keep him in a perfect state of health, wealth, peace, power, and abundance, whose mind is stayed upon God, the good, and the positive.